I wasn't gonna start the camera yet, but I sat down and the cat came over. So I had to run up and start the camera. Um, we once again are having a terrible white balance. Well, I'm Pink and this is the Keytar Cat. We're not gonna review the KX5 today. Why is everything orange? So the Alesis Vortex Wireless 2 is now $20 more expensive than the Yamaha SH500 Sonogenic, um, which means that one of my main arguments for why the Sonogenic was worse was that it was more expensive and inferior, and now it is less expensive and inferior. And according to some eBay averaging, I didn't check Reverb because that would make me competent. I only checked eBay, but according to some eBay averaging, this Kitar, which is slightly heavier than the Alesis Vortex, is now about $550 shipped. Which means that these two are closer in price than ever. These two Kitars are actually very similar. So we have to start out by saying this is a synth and this is a MIDI controller. And a MIDI controller controls other synths, whereas a synth Kitar has an instrument in it that is controlled by the keyboard. So when I plug this straight into my amp, it makes noise, but with this one I have to plug it into some kind of synthesizer instrument. Over here we have the Uno synth underneath the cat. And then I, where's the, where's the piano box mini? Oh, I'm on top of it. She likes this one because it gets warm. But you need some kind of device to plug it into and make noise. When you buy the Alesis Vortex, it comes with Ableton Light Live. MIDI is a standard, and so all sorts of stuff takes it. Currently, my favorite has been, where is it? Synth FM. So this is a free app for Android. So the Alesis Vortex has wireless MIDI though, so you can play this instrument completely wirelessly. All you have to do is take your phone out of its case, get this thingy, connect it to this thingy. There we go. So that is how easy MIDI is. Anything that handles MIDI, and there are millions of things out there. I don't think that's even an exaggeration. I bet there is probably at least one million things out there that can give you handling of a MIDI in signal. And it's wireless, so anything that can handle USB MIDI can handle this wirelessly, even if it doesn't have Bluetooth functionality. So the Alesis Vortex Wireless 2 weighs under 7.5 pounds. I will put the actual weight there, but what I do know is that these command hooks hold 7.5 pounds, and all the keytars that are over 7.5 pounds I had to put backup hooks on in case those command hooks fall off the wall because they're only rated to 7.5 pounds. The Alesis Vortex Wireless 2 uses four AA batteries in the other secret pocket of the Vortex Wireless 2. We have our wireless dongle that plugs into anywhere where you would plug in USB MIDI. We also have this USB-C to USB-A connector, $5, a chalk marker in case I need to write on a hard non-porous surface, an emergency pair of earbuds in case I need to hear, and this tiny screwdriver. With the Alesis Vortex Wireless 2, you never have to go without your essentials. Uh, tampons don't fit in here for the record. So I do need to clarify that the MIDI Engine USB was $40. Okay, so this is not actually a great MIDI instrument. Uh, one of the advantages of a MIDI controller is that you have access to all kinds of instruments, but the one I wanted to use right now is underneath the cat. We can't disrupt the cat. So this is just under seven and a half pounds, runs on four AA batteries, has an emergency chocolate pouch, 35, 37 full-sized keys with velocity, and aftertouch, which I can't demonstrate because this doesn't have aftertouch, but it does have aftertouch. Up on the neck, we have a sustain button. We will get back to why that's important in a minute. We got buttons to select what this pitch strip does, because it can be a mod strip or a pitch strip. We also have a pitch wheel. We have our octave shift that shifts up and down octaves. We 
we have multiple MIDI channels. Here we have it split between. So we can set between two different instruments. We also have a fader up here on the neck, eight faders here, and while well, these right now transmit on MIDI channel one on a different preset, we can make this drums. Because this is a MIDI controller, I can control vaguely what all of these things do. When I'm running this through Ableton, or not Ableton, sorry, I use Mainstage. Ableton lags my computer, and I just haven't tried it on my other computer. You can set these to be just general buttons. You can go, uh, I like to set these four to be instrument patches, like instrument banks, and then this to go up and down, and then I can move up and down to those pads with these. You can just set it to do that. You can do what you want with this. It's a MIDI controller. Sorry, keys. I know you hate me. It's okay. This is an analog synth. We got the four knobs here, and then we can select other parameters that these knobs control. I can assign anything on this to be these faders, which is important because of the way that you tend to play an analog synthesizer. Instead of having a bank of sounds like this is, this has sound number 1 through 5 is pianos, and sound number 121 is, um, I don't know, a sound 56 is bagpipes, I believe, but it's distinct instrument sounds. You have guitars and pianos and synth pads and synth leads and gunshots and bird tweets, whereas this does not have any presets designed to sound like anything. It just... Since a large portion of how analog synths tend to be played, especially monophonic ones, is by having a simple sequence run and then manipulating the sound as waveforms. to do that, and with the Alesis Vortex Wireless 2, I can do that. But if I want to plug this thing in, come on buddy, why did I turn it off? It takes forever to turn either of these back on. Like this is 2025, I shouldn't have to do that. With this one, if I want to stop being a piano and start being steel drums, if I want to switch between presets, it uh, gets a little bit difficult on this, but if I want to manipulate the instrument, this is the one I want to go for. But it is a MIDI controller, and a lot of people... If you aren't a MIDI controller kind of person, there's no shame in that. But there's two philosophies that I feel like a lot of people have without analyzing how hypocritical they are. People who would say, I don't want a MIDI controller. Okay. But I don't mind that the Sonogenic doesn't have a lot of sounds, because I can add more sounds via MIDI. So you didn't want a MIDI controller, you just wanted to get a keytar that you were going to use as a MIDI controller that was a worse MIDI controller than getting a designated MIDI controller. And that slowly drove me insane. If you're not interested in the Alesis Vortex, you can check out... Yeah, throw it on the ground paint, good plan. So if you want a keytar that is a similar size, roughly the same weight, same number of keys, and a general similar look as the Alesis Vortex Wireless 2, you have the Roland AX9 Lucina. The AX9 Lucina is a synth. It has 37 full-sized keys with velocity but no aftertouch. You know how I... Don't say that this has 30 sounds and this has 12 sounds. This one has 11 sounds and a drum set. This one has 28 sounds and two drum sets. This one, when you get to the last of the guitar sounds, it counts in its 150 tones. It counts this as a tone. And it counts this as a tone. I say it has 148 tones and two drum sets. It has a pitch strip but no pitch wheel. 
the modulation control, it's got one and it's this bar. So, you know when I uh, said that we'd get back to that thing about the sustain button? I realized I did not get back about that thing about the sustain button. There is no sustain button on the Lucina. There's a slot where you can put a foot pedal, because when I'm playing guitar and running around, I want to be tethered to where my foot pedal is for sustain. D-beam for control of assignable things that are controlled via infrared with how far your hand is from the sensor. Can I, like... Oh, right, hang on a sec. It helps if it's plugged in. Life hack there. To the right hole. Okay. So you can manipulate D-beam that way. And that is pretty much what you've got. You got your octave shift down here, and you have your patch select down here, and that's basically it. You don't have extra faders, you don't have sliders or drum pads. Um, but one thing that you do have... So here is us plugged into this instrument. It's been 40 years. Can we please standardize which side of a 5-pin MIDI jack is up? The notable thing that the Lucina does that the Vortex does not via MIDI is that I can select... So this is nut patches 1 through 24, this starts on 25, this starts on 48. Uh, yeah. If we want things to make noise, we have to plug them in. Why are we not making noise? Oh! You have to plug things in and turn the volume up. I see. So this is a General MIDI compliant device. General MIDI was established in 1992, making it useless for almost all keytars. Because all the vintage keytars I have that have MIDI out predate 1992. And all of the more modern keytars that have MIDI, like this, are from an era where it's not as necessary because you're not really controlling the sound patches through, like, rack modules anymore. We have little stuff like this in your computer where you manipulate it up here on the instrument. Like the, um, KX5, you can select 64 instruments, but general MIDI requires 128. And this is actually my only keytar that I have where I can access all 128 sounds in this via the buttons on the keytar. So that's just worth noting. If you play via MIDI and you like selecting pre-selected patches and you want to use it from instruments like this where you can't control what the patch list is, this is actually a really good keytar for that. It's like a little secret hidden thing. It doesn't matter that much with, like... So I can only select eight banks of eight, which is 64, with the Korg RK100 original. But because I'm going to be doing it in main stage, and I can just set these and say this is what they are in that order, and I control that, it doesn't become an issue. But if you want to play a lot of general MIDI compliant devices and you want to select the patches from your keytar, your numbers for what you can do that with are really small, and this is one of them. Other than that, this doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't give you any level of expression that you can't get off of the Vortex. Uh, all the D-beam things, like... Ain't that a lovely sound? I've got four different ways to control pitch on the Vortex. And the assignable controls aftertouch. Aftertouch on the Vortex is handled via aftertouch. Uh, the other thing to note is that the Lucina has significantly less sensitive keys than the Vortex Wireless 2. Um, when I'm playing this, if I'm playing quietly, I, I can bottom out. I'll press a key so quietly that it doesn't play. And then I can really easily top out and go above 128. So when you're connected via MIDI, and that's how I checked the sensitivity of this, was by connecting this into main stage and looking at the MIDI data. When you press a key, it transmits a number saying this is how hard I was pressed. And the number is somewhere between 0 and 127. And when you're playing it, if you want a really expressive keyboard, you want to be playing in a range where unless you're really trying, you don't hit. 128, and unless you're not playing anything, you don't hit zero. And when I was just playing with this to test out the um, 
levels to see what it was, I could really easily, with certain playing techniques, reach a point where this wasn't transmitting data or where I'd hit 127. However, oh dear, did I just unplug something? I straight up did. What did I unplug? Nobody knows! Okay. The other great thing about them both is that they both glow blue. Glow blue. They both glow blue. Much like an elven made sword in the presence of danger. Because it's not plugged in, that's why it's not making noise. I'm so good at this. The Vortex has, like, reverse weighted keys is the best way I can describe it, and it makes a very sensitive key bend. It's not necessarily something that you're gonna originally touch and go, oh, that's like something I've played before. But I've had people come over back when I had friends who could come to my house who'd like initially go, these are weird keys, but after a couple minutes you grow to kind of like them. Or you hate them and you throw this out the window. So I tried. I tried to play so quietly, like find a play technique that was so quiet that it would not read keys. I tried to find a play technique that was reasonable but so loud that I would top out and I couldn't get it with this. <laughs> When I was a kid, my mom would always yell at me for banging on the piano. Now I'm an adult and I can do what I want. And that pretty much sums it up. They are two different instruments for different styles of play. They're very similar, but they're sort of a general... Here's a thing. The Lucina is 10 years old. This is a 10-year-old instrument, and the sounds inside it... There is a certain timelessness element of synth sounds. So they sound like synths, and the way that we manufacture synth noises hasn't really changed too much. I mean, there's like... The SHS town sounds like FM synth. The thing is that when you get to the more real instrument sounds, we have made improvements as humanity in the sounds of a fake piano in the past 10 years. I'm also having trouble getting my left hand to be quieter than my right hand, and I know that that's a me problem because I play guitar all the time and don't do that much of this and um, do a lot more of this. Like, if you're not sometimes playing guitar in bed like a tiny gremlin holding a magic orb, I don't know what you're doing with your life. But you should try it. Tiny gremlin, magic orb. Like this. Like that. Tiny gremlin. It's great. And then when I tell my left hand to quiet down on this, it just turns off because I'm playing too quietly. The thing is that we have made progress in... fake piano should sound like, what a electric grand piano should sound like, and what an electronic organ should sound like, and what a harmonica and what an accordion should sound like. They sound a little bit dated, but the thing is that if they sound a little bit dated in 2020, when you still have this guitar in 10 years, because you'll still have all your guitars in 10 years, because you'll have been unable to progress as a person past where you were in your mid-late 20s. I love you. I love you. You're my favorite guitar. The guitar kitty. In 10 years, it's really gonna sound dated. And one of the things about a MIDI controller is that it can't sound dated because you can just plug a new thing into it. Which gets us to... How good is this as a MIDI controller? Apart from not having all the expression levels, the only other thing worth noting is that the USB port is up here and not down here. So it kind of comes out to like when you plug the SHS 300 into an amp. You have a cable that doesn't know why it's here or what it's doing, and this doesn't have wireless MIDI, it doesn't have Bluetooth MIDI. So if you're playing a USB, you are stuck with your cable being in a bad spot. The 5-pin jack is actually in a really good location, and I don't think that 5-pin MIDI is gonna die. Especially because, like, this doesn't have a 5-pin jack on it, but it does. Where did I put it? Under the cat. But now it's got 5-pin. I don't think 5-pin's gonna die. But if 5-pin dies and we go to USB, and this is your main keytar, you are screwed. So, if you are planning for what you're going to do with your life in 10 years, because these aren't uncertain times and we don't all know if we're going to die, um, 
maybe, maybe you want to take into consideration where the U.S. paid for <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm stupid too, thanks for saying it. Yeah, I think I'm stupid and you think I'm stupid, so we're buddies. The special tones were designed to be specifically good for this keytar to show its variety and variability. You know, you've got your polysynth, and you've got your monosynth, uh, and your bass. Here's where you get to, like, this is what they thought was the ideal... And, of course, that's the only fun part about playing the trombone anyway. They had six special tones and they designated one entirely to... They were so sure that Jazz Scat was the best example of what this keytar could do. This one doesn't get thrown on the floor as often. Is this thing as a synth better than what I can do with a MIDI controller? It depends on what you play, it depends on how you play. If you... come on, buddy. If you want the maximum level of expression out of your keyboard, and you want to be able to control as many parameters on any given software instrument at a time, you want the AX Edge. If weight is an issue, you want the AX Edge. I mean, you do want the AX Edge, but not if weight is an issue. I meant to say the Vortex. You want to control parameters within a single instrument, where you are adjusting things like attack and decay and LFO involvement and things like that. You want to get the Alesis Vortex. But if you don't know what you want to do yet, and you're still learning and you're afraid of jumping in with a MIDI controller, you're interested in the Vortex and you're like, I wish I could get the Alesis Vortex, but with sounds? That's effectively what the Lucina is. You miss out on a lot of the tools, but you get sounds that already know what they're doing. And this kind of tries to please everyone. It's like, look, we got synths and a piano and an organ. We got everything. We got jazz scat. You gotta love jazz scat. Jazz scat's the greatest. What am I doing? <laughs> Okay, so... <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> if you're intimidated by setup and you want somebody else to do the setup for you, you've got the Lucina, but we need to get to the real reason that people buy keytars. If you don't like how it looks, you're not gonna like how it plays. Like, I don't know how to word it better. On the paper, you could say, this is the best keytar for me. This is my dream keytar. It has every function I've ever wanted and nothing else. And I've never wanted anything else. And it's in my price range. And it's everything I've needed. It doesn't have a single thing I haven't ever wanted. Somebody looked in my mind and drew a keytar and they drew this. And this is what I want. And then you look at it and you go, oh, there's no neck. There's just this weird box pocket thing. Oh, I'm not sure I like that anymore. Even if we lopped that section off and this played exactly like the Vortex Wireless 2, you wouldn't be able to tell while you were playing that they were different instruments, but you don't like the box pocket? You don't need to get it. This one does more. This one's got it done for ya. This is vaguely unrelated, but I recently found the Kitar subreddit, and people just reference me like everyone knows who I am, which is flattering. But I was not ready for that, so I was like, well, Pink doesn't like the Sotagenic. I'm like, wait, me Pink? I'm Pink? I mean, I am Pink. Like, anyhow, I don't know where this is going anymore, except that I don't want to kill someone's meme So if you are interested in stickers, these stickers are printed on clear sticker paper because I thought that it was the regular sticker paper that I put in the printer, but it was the clear sticker paper. Uh, Pink and the Keytar Cat on Patreon. There should be a link down at the bottom. I forgot to put a link in one of the earlier videos and somebody called me out on it. Thank you for that. This 
is the doorway to a complex land of synths where you can get them to do whatever you want. This one does pretty much everything you want out of the bat and you don't have to go into any complex lands. Yeah, I could just delete the whole rest of the video and just say that. You can also do what I do, which is the Pokemon style of Kitar ownership. One of these days I'll make Kitar Cat stickers that have the Kitar Cat and not just Kitars on them. You poop the yard? She says, no, I want dinner. I always forget this. Do you know that just saying make sure to subscribe if you want to and to like this video and leave a comment because it really boosts my visibility? Did you know that that actually makes people do that?